In my magazine pages, I mainly focus on using forms and conventions of a music magazine to make it look more realistic. I haven't challenged or developed any key elements so I could make it look more professional and a conventional product. Looking at the magazine front cover, I have a masthead which is placed at the top of the page. It is the biggest text on the front cover and the font used is unique and is not used anywhere else on the magazine. The font used was CF Anarchy which is like a stamped, erased and faded font which gives you a clear indication to what the genre is. As if I was doing a genre, for example dance, I would use more of a bubbly font. I have also used a positioning statement which all magazines have, such as Enemy is famous for their new musical express statement. It is placed directly underneath the masthead. I have also used cover lounge, which is a must on a magazine. It entices the reader to buy the magazine to find out what the rest of the article says, as the cover lines give you an insight to the magazine. Another thing similar to the cover lines on my front cover is my main cover line, which shows the main article in the magazine and what the issue is sort of based around. In the main cover line, this being the second biggest font on the front cover, I use the word exclusive. This pulls the reader in as it is a buzzword. The one thing that stands out on any magazine is the main image. This is because of the direct address, as when looking at it, you feel as though the person is looking at you. I have also used this on my magazine as well as creating the mise-en-scene, for example, her clothes, makeup, and facial expression, to represent the genre of the magazine so the reader doesn't get confused and mixes up what genre the magazine is, which is indie rock. A convention that is very small but important is the issue information and the barcode. This is important because it tells the reader whether it is an old or new magazine. And also, you can't buy a magazine without a barcode. On the top of the magazine is the skyline. This includes other bands that are featured in the magazine to make the reader interested in reading it. I've also included an incentive on the top right hand corner. That includes a free giveaway or competition. This will also entice the reader to buy it as they have a chance of winning something. On my contents page, I have again focused on using conventions to make it look more realistic and professional. I have used a three column layout to make it easy for the audience to navigate. I have used the column headings feature in regular to show what is in the magazine for that month only and what will be included in every magazine each month. I have also placed the page numbers down the side of all the articles to help with navigation throughout the magazine. I have put these each in separate purple boxes to follow the colour scheme and to highlight the numbers again to help with the navigation. And make it clear. I have used a smaller version of the masthead on the right hand corner of the page. This is almost a trademark of the magazine. Next to the smaller version of the masthead is the title contents. This is the biggest text on the page and just tells you what the page is. Also included on my contents is four images from gigs. These relate to individual articles shown on the page and split up the page so it's just not big blocks of text because the audience might find that a bit boring and won't want to read a page which is just three columns of text in a tile. On the main images I have added captions to show what it is and I have added larger page numbers that links to the individual articles in the feature section mainly. Also there is a page number in the bottom right hand corner of the page to help with navigation around the magazine as well. As well it is laid out with the headline information and article information below and the page number next to each article. In my double page spread, like the same as in every magazine, I have created it by using the conventions and forms of a double page spread. I have used a main image that clearly includes the band the article is written about and I have done it so it fills the whole of one page and bleeds slightly into the next. On the image I have included a poor cloak which I thought was interested and placed it on the bottom of the images. I have made this bold and clear by using a colour that is the direct opposite to the darkness of the image. Using the font impact to entice the audience to read in it and not skip the page. I have also used another portrait in the middle of the article to entice the reader as because it is bolder and a different colour it will be the first thing that audience read after the headline. I have included page numbers on the bottom outside corners of the pages so if it was a full complete magazine the audience would know they were on the correct page and reading that article they intended to. 
On the right-hand page, I've used conventions of a headline. Instead of using a quote or making up a headline, I use the band's name, except in April, to make it clear who the overall double page is about. The font I used for the headline was Wrong Place, Wrong Time, from the website dafont.com. I thought this font would stick with the genre of the magazine and give it a rock indie band, as well as following what the band and their music are like. The article written below, the headline, is a three-column layout which, again, is using a convention of a music magazine to make it clear. I have spread out the questions and answers to make it not look like big blocks of text and changing the colour of the question to purple to make it bolder and make it obvious that those are the questions that were asked. At the beginning of the article, I have used the convention of a stand first, which is an introduction to the article including information about the band and about the time we did the interview. At the beginning of the article, I use a drop cap, which is also in convention. This indicates where the article starts by making the first layer of the first word slightly bigger than the rest. At the end of the article, I used a byline which tells the audience who wrote the article and took the photographs. Everything I've shown and described in my magazine includes all the codes and conventions I've used on all my pages, hopefully to make it look realistic and professional and clear.